Time now for the Fox Report with broadcaster and Reclaim Party leader Lawrence Fox and Home Secretary Suala Braverman has today ordered police to stop the, quote, Orwellian recording of the names of those accused of non-crime hate incidents. Now, this was after a 14-year-old autistic schoolboy's name was added to police records when he accidentally scuffed a copy of the Quran at Wakefield's Kettlethorpe High School. Now, Superwoman Suala slammed the police's response to the incident, insisting that, quote, people are perfectly entitled to say things about politics, gender and religion that others find offensive. Disagreement is not incitement and nor is irreverence or mockery, adding that British police investigations must never include politically correct distractions. So, Lawrence, look, you have been campaigning on this issue now uh, for a number of months. Do, do you think this is a sign that you're finally winning the battle against the politicised plod? Good evening, Dan. Um, yeah, look, it's a step in the right direction. And we should all take our hats off to Harry Miller, actually, who put his life and livelihood and house on the line to fight Miller versus College of Policing over non-crime hate incidents. Um, yeah, it's a step in the right direction. But what's happening now, the police, instead of using non-crime hate incidents, is they're using criminal legislation. So they are actually doubling down. They will not give up on the woke agenda. They want to please your speech with every ounce of their being. That's what they're like. And when you think about this poor young lad, Lawrence, 14 years old, you know, does a silly stump with a Quran. I mean, the police should have nothing to do with it. The police should actually be going for the thugs that are threatening this young boy and his family. Absolutely. Uh, it's appalling. And anyone who's witnessed what happened with the Batley Grammar School teacher uh, yeah, yeah, realises yeah. that we do not live Just in a theocracy the in this country. We live in a liberal secular democracy, which means we tolerate, not respect, we tolerate all religions and none. And um, anyone that wants to establish a theocracy in this country should be roundly rebutted. And I think um, Suella Braverman has been very good on this issue. But, you know, politicians do talk. It's whether they walk as well. Now, look, uh, I want to talk about uh, probably my least favourite, from one of my favourites to my least favourite politician in the country, the failed London Mayor Sadiq Khan, uh, who has undoubtedly left the capital once the greatest city in the world, worse off, uh, with crime spiralling out of control. You know, you've got the public transport network running on empty, unpopular air pollution policies driving London's road users to despair. And next year, of course, we'll see a new mayor elected. And you, Lawrence, are keen to see an alternative Labour voice who will challenge Khan's campaign for a third spell in office. What can you tell us? Well, I, you know what, Dan, I think that the left generally have been ignored. You know, those that campaign against social inequality, who are looking for better unionisation and, and a fairer and better distribution of wealth. That's been hijacked by this man, Sadiq Khan, who would rather tweet about anything. But from the menopause to climate change, then he would tweet about the fact that his capital city is ground to a halt and he's overseeing the biggest, most exponential growth in crime that London has ever witnessed. So I think that someone like Jeremy Corbyn, a traditional leftist, well, not leftist, but left winger, should stand as London mayor against Sadiq Khan and give the people of London an actual left wing opportunity, which means that the right wing can sneak in our own candidate. <laughs> yes, split the vote. It is a good yeah. strategy. Uh, get them going for each other and then someone comes through the middle. I like it. Uh, I also have to ask you about this. The lefty government in Wales, which, again, I don't think gets enough uh, attention fr from the mainstream media, has given us another miserable glimpse into a future under a potential Keir Starmer administration, publishing official guidance that famous statues of, quote, old white men should be hidden or destroyed to create, quote, the right historical narrative. Welsh wokery warriors are concerned that some statues glorify powerful, older, able-bodied white men, which they worry is offensive to Wales' diverse population. Now, Lawrence, we've known for a while that able-bodied white men are a real threat uh, to the left. Uh, but let's call this out for what it is, right? State-sponsored racism. Absolutely what it is. Uh, if this sort of behaviour was aimed at any other ethnic group, uh, there would rightly and justifiably be outrage that um, such open and transparent racism was available. But it's also an argument to ditch this idea of devolution. 
and, and to stop the Welsh having a say on this stuff. This stuff should come, we're a United Kingdom, our laws and our rules should come out the centre of government. Why do these people have parliaments? Sorry to be rude, but, you know, I, how dare you speak about white people in this way? It's, it's abject and vile racism and that's what it is and it should be called out by these little upper middle class white liberals who think that they can apologize for everything and and, and in some way sort of advance the cause of anti-racism which in itself is a complete travesty because the it, the ideology behind anti-racism is that the opposite of it is racism and therefore you've got to have someone you can be acceptably racist to which is white people and i'm sick of it and everything woke touches it destroys and we need to attack it with from all angles